Alright, so like I promised, I'm here with a breakdown video of Dying to Know Episode 4. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So the episode starts with a talk about the vast open world of Dying Light 2, where they show us a small clips featuring the city and its locations. So in the first clip, we see some degenerated biters roaming around just like in Dying Light, but this time there won't be many variety of infected on the ground during the daytime. After that, we see a man being hanged by a group of people. These guys are bandits and are part of no faction. They loot places and kill other survivors for their own good. In the next scene, we see a small place filled with water and toxic. And from the looks of it, it's really safe to say that it's a dumping place for bodies. In the next scene, we see this beautiful bee house on a rooftop, so you'll be able to harvest honey from this either for consumption or to sell it in the bazaar. Now, as we were aware of the animals being in Dying Light 2, well, we see it right here that there will be plenty of animals around the map, which you can hunt for their meat or skins. Next, we see this huge church-like place, which has been taken by the renegades, and what's crazy is that the infected have surrounded the whole building, and there seems to be no trap or sort of any protection to get rid of these infected. In case of peacekeepers, we have seen them defend their place, so I think Techland was right about renegades, not caring much about infected. Next, we see these huge buildings, which again, like Teclan mentioned, can be explored. You can enter almost all the buildings in the city and God, look at the trees on top of every building. It just looks amazing and shows how the nature has taken over after 15 years of apocalypse. After that, we get to see the modern and the old villador. Then we see this bar called Fisheye, and this was something mentioned back in 2019, a place where all the survivors meet to chill out and share their stories. Inside this bar, you'll meet many new characters that you can interact with, and some might even have some quests for you. Even in the next scene, we can see some modern and old buildings. Some are just left like that and filled with infected, whereas some have been taken by different factions, so you can clearly see what the pandemic has done to other buildings and how the nature has taken over. By the way, the same camera from Dying Light is here. Also finally we have some underground stations which holy crap looks scary and reminds me of Metro games. After this we see this cargo ship that has been taken by peacekeepers and look at the surroundings are so clear like look they got fences and all their protection. Renegades, you gotta learn something from these guys. After this scene, we enter the bar again where there is an easter egg of Mama from Dying Light. If Mama ain't happy, nobody happy. A small detail that can be easily missed. Trust me, you don't wanna miss this because Ghazi won't be happy. After this, we see this market where the stores are selling fruits and vegetables and there is no potato. Like, I'm sorry, there is no potato, bruh. I'm not gonna survive a day. Also, let's get to the good stuff. Romance. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, my dude died after a few seconds of romance. <laughs> so, the first rule, no romance, no puppy poopy, stay away and stay alive. Okay, my dude learned the hard way, you wanna be safe from this. Also, we got opera, hell yeah, make some more noise and attract those infected. You know what, infected be like, nom nom nom, make some more noise, wait for night nani. By the way, there is a scene where you can see this big air balloon with the fish eye bar logo painted. This is done so the survivors can spot this place from far away. Well, just in case if you lost your way home. Then after this, we see Aiden bring back the electricity to the city. He is seen bringing the electric cable to another location so he can plug it in, but looks like holding the cable is timed based, so if you run out of the time, the cable might just release on its own. Well, after this, we see the electricity has returned to the city, and this peacekeeper building looks so awesome. Multiple houses built over each other. This is so good. Also, Fisheye got the power back on. Now the best part. Air vents starts working. This can be used as a jump boost for Aiden. Like, Aiden will equip his paraglider and the air when throwing air outside will push Aiden in the air and this is so cool. Also the electrical traps come back online that can be used to electrocute the enemies near also hold up. Did you guys see the spitter in the background? That green toxic is coming at you, directly at you. Well, I have a separate video on that, so if you guys want to check that out, link will be in the description. Next, we are introduced to the city alignment system, which means your choices will change the places and the city around you in real time. Also, this skyscraper of Peacekeeper looks awesome, and you can see this crane sort of thing that can be used to pull you up like an elevator, well, just in case if you ever need to. Also, during one of the scenes, I saw this huge bridge in the background, and you know what? We all would love to jump from that place and land on the car or something. Then in the same scene, we see survivors building a school after a decision we took also that yellow thing most likely looks like a punching bag but at the same time it can be a bell sort of thing because i remember in one of the stories they ring the bell before the night falls so everyone can get on the rooftops and stay away from the infected but this is most likely those ring bells now if you choose to help peacekeepers then this place becomes a rooftop outpost and you got traders inside who will actually buy most likely animal skins and meat from you
you. By the way, what the hell is that glowing crystal there? Now the good part. During the night, these survivors will tell their story, urban legends, fall tales, and if you made good decisions in the city and become a hero, obviously you'll have your own story being told by these survivors. That's cool. Also, we got some theater and music plays on rooftops, just in case if infected don't hear you. Honestly, God, these infected are lazy if they don't climb up in the building after hearing all that stuff. Also, some new weapons, LOL. I remember this thing back in 2017. Well, this was something new, but apparently this thing from 2017 is new in 2021, so cool, cool. Next, we come to the music part. All I can say for this is this. Nice. Well, at least we know every faction has a different theme, and if you lose one of the places to another faction, there's gonna be another music for that. Also, if you wanna join Peacekeepers, follow this rule. By the way, did you know the more parkour you do, the faster the music gets, and it gets to a point where it sounds like a whole orchestra. So that is a good thing. Well, new gameplay, hell yeah, Parker on the moon. <laughs> I mean, hey, some moves do look floaty, but honestly, I love that there are so many new moves because this shit looks so good. Also, glitch a glitch here. Also, God, what powers do Aiden hold? Damn, that jump had too much force. Honestly, guys, let's appreciate how beautiful this world looks and the parkour is good. It just needs a little bit of tweaking and it will be perfect. By the way, anybody recognize this place? This windmill in the background is actually a base in the game. Check this out. By the way, I'm pretty sure these windows are places where the infected came out during the night or maybe a survivor jumped out to save his life. Also, during the whole parkour scene, Aiden had no biomarker, so this is pretty early in the game. Now comes the big surprise. New Lawan. Now we get to see a new gameplay showing Lawan and Aiden in action. It looks like she's part of a wildcard faction and you can tell by the mask she's wearing. While well, Aiden tries to choke Lawan and her mask falls off and Aiden's like, hey beautiful. And then boom, Lawan hits Aiden in the bulbul and Aiden is on the ground crying and Lawan literally shot Aiden with a crossbow and she missed it. Well, honestly, I feel like she was giving a warning other than actually trying to kill him. Luan is a complex character and she has a hit list for a reason. She might be hunting bad guys and you know the best way to know bad guys is to be among them. So I think that's the reason we see her with the Valkart faction. She probably know Aiden is a good guy, helping everyone, so she left him with a warning. I say that because in the next clip you can see Luan saving my man Frank, who for fuck's sake will die again. I'm pretty sure he's gonna die again. Anyway, she's going against Valkart faction action here so we know for sure she's a good person also look at that crazy weapon by the way during another scene we see Luan giving Aiden a paraglider so now you know how Aiden gets a paraglider in the game also a fun thing look at the billboard saying run like there's no tomorrow that's like an irony there <laughs> anyway that ends our episode 4 here and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video till then stay safe and stay human or this papa volatile will be mad mad <laughs>